OID has an impact on every aspect of the image except for shape distortion. Real quick, what's shape distortion? Magnification. Shape distortion, um, magnification is size distortion. So there is distortion, which is misrepresentation of, uh, about, of, 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 of an object, okay? Distortion has two flavors, size and shape. Size distortion is magnification. Changes the apparent size of an object without changing its shape. It's just, it's just bigger, right? Shape distortion ch changes the appearance of the object. It will look different if it's shape distorted. Like if I, um, if I make a shadow of my hand, right? And then I take my, my, my hand and I angle my hand like that. What do you notice about my fingers? The apparent shadow of my fingers when I angled my hand? Shorter. There's my length of my fingers, right? And as I angle my fingers, the fingers appear shorter, okay? As I angle the light, the fingers will appear longer, okay? So shape distortion is not affected by, by object to image distance. It's the only thing not affected. OID affects everything else, okay? OID affects exposure level. Think about it, right? There's a source of radiation, and the object has some distance off the image receptor. If you fix the source of radiation and move your object up, the OID is increasing, but the object's getting closer to the source, right? Closer to the source of radiation. So it affects exposure level. It affects subject contrast, okay? We'll see how that happens in, in, in on just the next slide. <sighs> Because it affects subject contrast, it affects noise or scatter. Because it's changing the relationship of the object, image receptor, and source of radiation, the relationship of those three things to each other, it affects recorded detail. Remember, long source to image distances give us better detail. Because the radiation, uh, radiating body was far from the object, okay? <laughs> Well, with an increase in OID, you're bringing the object closer to the radiating body, okay, to the radi to the to the uh, focal spot. On your drawing, mm -hmm. you said, so I'm confused. So the it affects what side of the body, like the top. Uh, OID is measured from the top of the body. To the to the. So o what OID. OID is this, the distance from the top of the object down to the image receptor here, mm -hmm. down to the receptor, okay? Like that distance, from right? here to down here. Exactly, so yeah, from the top of the hand down to the image receptor would be the object to image distance. Now, I could put my hand flat on the tabletop, right? And it still has, you know, a three to five centimeter OID because that's how thick my hand is, right? I could also put my hand on top of a radiographic sponge and now my OID is bigger. Even though my hand's not thicker, I have more OID now, right? Object to image distance. So it affects sharpness of recorded detail as well as magnification. The only thing that OID can help make better is if you increase OID, you um, improve subject contrast. You increase subject contrast with an increased OID. This is something in, in early radiography we called the air gap technique. Okay, some of you, have, we had a chance to talk about that in the x-ray room. It's the idea that the body part scatters x-rays, right? Scatter radiation reaching the image receptor fogs the image receptor, yeah? So if you move the object away from the image receptor, high above the image receptor, now those scattered x-rays have more space to spread out and then thin out, okay? There will be less of them in any one spot now. Less noise on the image receptor, less scatter reach the receptor. We improve subject contrast in that way. So here, here's the idea shown, that's a little picture. So on the image on the left, up at the top, we've got the source of radiation, image A. We see the x-ray beam diverging coming down. We see that square rectangular object and all those scattered x-rays within that object. All of those scattered x-rays, or a greater percentage of those scattered x-rays in image A, will reach the image receptor, fogging the receptor, creating fog. In image B, they've taken the object, they've moved it up off the image receptor, increasing its object to image distance, 
and allowing those scattered x-rays more space to spread out and thin out their, uh, their, that blanket of exposure, okay? This improves subject contrast. So something called the air gap technique, it can be used to improve subject contrast. We only used, to, we typically used to do it um, in hand radiography with, with film, okay? With film, we had the disadvantage that if we wanted to zoom in on something, we couldn't, okay? In order to zoom in on something with a piece of photographic film, you literally took a magnifying glass. That's why, by the way, that's why the zoom button looks like a magnifying glass on anything, right? It's because before we had computers, if we wanted to zoom in on something, we took a magnifying glass and we zoomed in on it with a magnifying glass, right? Bent the light, made it look bigger. With digital radiography, we don't have to worry about this um, as much, okay? So we did it with hand radiography because if you gave the hand air gap, air gap, OID, you would improve subject contrast and you would magnify the hand, okay? But if you remember from the previous talk about SID, this distance change would actually increase the penumbral blur, okay? Making the hand blurrier, but in some cases clearer because you're letting the scatter spread out. You're magnifying it, letting the scatter radiation spread out, and you're hoping that the improvement in subject contrast and the increase in magnification sort of um, account for more than the, blur, than the increase in blur that you just made, okay? So we're, we're sort of trying to fight two, two variables against each other there, and it worked. It worked well for um, film radiography. We don't so much do that anymore. So nowadays, there's really no good reason to have purposeful OID, okay? Almost always, now I told you at the very beginning of the slides, if you remember nothing else, keep OID as little as possible, right? So that, that's, that's the sort of backstory to it. Um, good, so let's talk about OID's effect on exposure. So if you think about it, right, if, if OID changes, SID can be fixed, right? If the SID is 40 inches, the object can move around all at once and the SID doesn't change, right? So OID and SID are independent of each other, okay? So two things are gonna happen. As you increase object to image distance, bring the object off of the image receptor, you will increase the exposure to the object, okay? The object's getting closer to the source of radiation. So by the inverse square law, the object is, is gonna receive more radiation as it moves closer to the radiating object to the radiating body, the x-ray tube. Secondly, the exposure at the image receptor is going to go down. This is why there was an improvement in subject contrast, okay? So exposure needs to be split up into, there's exposure to the patient and there's exposure at the image receptor. As you increase OID, you increase exposure to the patient and you decrease exposure at the receptor because now that remnant beam exiting the bottom of the hand will have more space to spread out. And so what would have been concentrated into a small area on the image receptor is now spread out over a much larger area, okay? Decreasing receptor exposure. So it's sort of a complicated dance, right? Receptor exposure goes down, but body part exposure goes up. And um, neither one of those things are necessarily good, right? You don't want the patient getting more exposure than they need, and you want the right amount of exposure reaching the image receptor, okay? Um, a small reminder about exposure. Exposure is, at the image receptor, is given by two things. How much um, radiation's in the remnant beam from primary x-rays, and how much radiation's in the remnant beam from scattered radiation, okay? As you add OID, you're going to decrease the amount of scattered radiation reaching the image receptor, and it should, roughly speaking, maintain the amount of, 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 of remnant beam from primary x-rays. So you are reducing receptor exposure, but you're, you're doing it by reducing the amount of scattered radiation at the receptor. Okay? That's why the previous few slides, that's why we said it improved subject contrast. Decrease in scatter is an increase in subject contrast. So you've learned a few things so far. You've learned that OID has an effect on subject contrast. You've learned that it has an effect on patient exposure and receptor exposure. The next thing is, what is its effect on spatial resolution, sharpness of detail? 
So the relationship is the longer the OID, the lower the spatial resolution. What kind of relationship is that? Inverse. Inverse, yeah. Uh, OID goes up, spatial resolution goes down. Exactly. Good, good, good. Shown here, right? And, and remember, spatial resolution is all about the penumbra, the blurry edge to the body part, right? These two, what, um, what, uh, what variable is the same between these two? Focal spot size is the same. And uh, image receptor is in the same spot, right? Focal spot's in the same spot. What is the name for the distance from focal spot to image receptor? Uh, central ray is the sort of the middle x-ray beam, but SID, the distance, right? Source to image distance. Is the source to image distance apparently the same for both of these? No. Yes, it is, right? SID is the same, right? What changed between these two? Penumbra changes because what variable is changing? The object. The object to image distance, right? So notice the, um, the SID, right? Distance from here down to receptor is the same for both of these, okay? But the distance from the surface of the object to the image receptor is different for this one compared to that one, okay? OID changes, and as we increase OID, as we increase OID, our penumbral shadow gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, last class I gave a, uh, like a quantitative formula. You could figure out exactly how big that penumbral blur is. Don't worry about it anymore. Okay? I might give you a question on it occasionally, but it's the most important thing. I can't stress this enough with x-rays. What's more important than, than the formulas are the relationships that they have. Right? OID has the relationship with penumbra that as OID gets bigger, penumbra gets bigger. Okay? That's what you actually need to know. Okay? And as OID gets smaller, penumbra gets smaller. There's a formula you can plug in numbers and say exactly how much smaller, but what's more important than that is there's a relationship and you should learn if it's direct or inverse, um, or, or, or you know, if it makes exponential changes or not, right? We wanna learn the relationships, okay? As OID increases, penumbra increases. OID goes up, penumbra goes up. That's a nice direct relationship there. Um, good. And by the way, you know, as I said earlier, take a flashlight, right? Play with it. Yeah. So you take the flashlight, you turn all the lights off, right? Put the flashlight at the wall, and you go, I've got a nice clear shadow of my hand. Nice clear shadow of my hand. And as I move my hand from the wall, SID is fixed, flashlight doesn't move. My hand gets larger, but also gets blurrier, okay? Not the body of my hand, the shadow of my hand is a black shadow, right? It's still a black shadow here, okay? What's getting blurrier is the edge. The penumbra gets blurrier, and the closer I get, the more magnified it gets, and the blurrier it gets, right? It's harder to tell where the edge of my finger is here compared to here, right? That's the same concept as is being shown here on the screen. This P for penumbra is representing the width of the blurry edge, okay? And the width of that blurry edge gets bigger when OID is bigger compared to when OID is smaller. Okay, let me, let me, let me give one more level to this, okay? Ignore this one, so we'll just, you know, get rid of that, ignore that. Focus on this one, okay? What can I do if, o, if I can't, if this is fixed, I, I, I'm not allowed to change OID, okay? How can I make the image sharper? By bringing the focus spot, um, um, increase, increase the focus spot. Mm -hmm. Which is it changing what variable? The SID. Yeah, so I make the SID longer, right? If I have a fixed distance, my hand is a fixed distance from the wall and I can't get rid of my blurriness by moving my hand closer, right? then just take the source of radiation and move it further away, okay? Anybody shot cervical spine x-rays? C-spine? Yeah? What are our images for C-spine? So like AP, probably one of them, right? Open mouth. Open mouth. Lateral. What distance do you shoot the AP and open mouth at? 40. Well, it depends. You can do a 40, but I've done it at 72. But what's typical? 40, right? What distance do you shoot the lateral C-spine at? 
Why? Why does it change? What did increasing the SID do? When we, we, we you just said, what, what, what did you your change to increasing SID made the penumbral shadow smaller, right? Mm -hmm. The blurriness smaller, and it will decrease magnification, right? Okay, so you're shooting an AP lumbar spine, right? Back against the board, spine's pretty close to the bucky, to the wall bucky, right? Okay, we shoot at 40 inches because our spine's got a minimal OID, right? Our spine's in the back here. It's pretty close to the image receptor, minimal OID. Then we go to shoot our lateral, okay? And when we shoot our lateral, the closest we can get is to our, our shoulder touching the board, right? And now I've got this gap between my shoulder and my neck that is now in, representing an increase in OID, okay? Well, increases in OID do a couple of things, right? For one, they magnify, and two, they decrease spatial resolution by increasing the penumbral blur. So what do you do? Your x-ray tube was at 40 inches. Exactly as Emmanuel said, you back up your x-ray tube, increasing the SID, okay? So there's a real-world application for this, right? You have OID you can't get rid of, like, you know, the fact that people have shoulders, okay? Uh, one image, AP, lets you put the neck very close to the receptor. The other image, lateral, does not. So for the lateral, you back up your SID, increasing it, bringing back your penumbral blur to smaller, making penumbral blur, blur smaller, and taking away that magnification that was added by having the OID built in. Okay. Would yeah. that be the same to if you were doing the hip, you know, from the side as well? Um, they would pull it back or something? Just like you, well, so no, because the way we do the hip, um, we don't change the body part like that. We would do the, the way we do the hip is like AP like this, right? Like this. And then the, the lateral is just like that. All we do is abduct the hip and, and flex, extend it out. So the body part wouldn't move further away from the receptor in that case. Um, Any time a body part would have to move further away from a receptor, we would want to, we would want to um, make that change. Another good example might be if I can pull out something from my box of bones. You get somebody comes in with a knee, and you want them to fully extend their knee, right? Minimizing OID, giving you correct alignment, but they come in in partial flexion like that, okay? That is an OID that you can't get rid of, okay? So you can increase SID to account for it, okay? Just remember, what happens as you increase SID? Like, what happens to exposure at the receptor as you increase SID? Oh, more Distance goes up, exposure goes down. Down. That's the inverse square law, right? So Emmanuel's uh, action of, in this one, right, taking and moving the source of radiation further away would work to bring back spatial resolution, decrease magnification, but he would have to account for the fact that he increased his SID, and he'd have to add more radiation to the primary beam to begin with, okay? That's something I'll talk about next time called the mass maintenance formula. It's actually in this set of notes, but I'm not going to talk about it today just because there's too many formulas. So he would add KVP or mass, mass. MAS. Yeah. yeah, more X-rays, more X-rays in the beam. So there's uh, there's m multiple things moving when you when you do this, right? This is why we try to fix SID because the you know he says yeah you can move SID back and get back spatial resolution, get back your you know you know make your object less magnified. But you have to remember that you're going to change the exposure at the receptor when you change your SID. Okay, so you can change it, but um, it comes with other effects. The next is the effect on magnification. Uh, this is what I showed you guys in a, in a, in a previous class. Um, OID of zero, or as little as it can be in A, and OID of 20 centimeters, it's about four-ish inches, OID of 20 centimeters in D. Excuse me. D has a visibly larger hand than A. It's the same hand though, right? Nothing changed except for in D, the hand was brought up off the receptor. In A, the hand was put flat to the receptor. I like doing hands. Hands are fun. Yeah. Usually people are the easiest first thing to learn. I like pills already. <laughs> and so the deal here is that... Um, Moving the object closer to the source of radiation will magnify the umbra 
the umbra gets bigger, okay? Again, I will just keep saying this. Get a flashlight, play with it, okay? If you have kids, make shadow puppets for your kids and then play with the effects of, of moving things around with your shadow puppets, right? The flashlight is your x-ray tube, the distance from light to wall is SID, and the distance from hand to wall is OID. And you can make all these same effects happen. As well as those things, you can make the, the uh, you can shape distort by misaligning the flashlight, right? Changing the direction that your hand's angled. You can do all kinds of things with a flashlight and they all apply directly to these, to these concepts, okay? So all of the relational concepts you can get down easy peasy if you play with a flashlight. But yeah, that's the idea. You have a source of radiation, it's fixed. In A and B, it's the same distance. SID is fixed. In A, the object is close. In B, the object is far away. Close, far away. I know all my scribbles are still up there, but close and far away. And the umbra gets larger when the object has a larger OID. For all of these reasons, especially the geometrical ones, including magnification and sharpness, OID should be kept as short as possible. And that's what I started with, right? Keep it, keep it short, okay? Well, that's all I want to say on that. Um, we don't need to worry about distance ratios. I should give us a reminder about the magnification formula. In the version, it's not difficult. When I went into the x ray room, remember how you told us um, to um, start like with our Bucky and our like to align our stuff for yeah. to like visualize? Yeah, so I, I had been doing that because I had remember you had shown mm -hmm. us or whatnot. And then the other day, I don't know why, but I was like, no, let me, let me see how I had to do something different. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. what a disaster! Yeah. I was, all, I was like, I got so confused. I was like, why is... And it's only three things you have to move, yeah. but real quickly it gets out of whack if you don't... I move the body, I move the... I'm so confused and I was yeah. like, I wonder why. So that's, that's an extremely useful piece of advice, right? In the x-ray room, you've got an x-ray tube, source of radiation. You've got a patient or object, and you've got an image receptor that all three need to be aligned in some specific way for that exam, right? My advice in that case to Jessica was... There's three things. Take two of the three of them and put them into alignment before you bring the third one into alignment, okay? You know, if it's a hand x-ray, take and put the cassette on the tabletop, align the x-ray tube centered to the cassette, and then just have the patient come up and put their hand on it in the position you want them to put, the, put it in, collimate, make your little adjustments, right? It's one thing moving at a time, right? If instead you do anything different than that, you'll have more things moving at one time than you want, and you may get easily confused. I experienced x-ray techs may too, right? There's too many variables, and you want to minimize the number of variables changing at any one time. And the advice is only change one variable at a time. That's good advice for positioning. That's good advice for setting technical factors, right? I, I won't change KVP and MAS at the same time. If I have to adjust something, I will adjust one of them. Like yeah. for like a repeat or something like that, right? Yeah, that's really great advice. You know, um, tell that to the next people that you work with, right? You know, hey, there's three things. Move two of them, put them in place, and then bring the third one into alignment. Yeah, that helped me out a lot. Yeah, good, good, good. Um, the last thing that I want to get on the table is, and we've done a little bit of this before, um, distance ratios. I'm not going to talk about you know, similar triangle geometries and blah, blah, blah. What I want to just talk about is pretty straightforward, okay? There's three basic measurements you need to, to know in order to figure out how magnified something will be. And this is what I want to focus on is magnification right now. Um, it's a ratio called the SID-SOD ratio. It's a ratio of source to image distance to source to object distance. Here's a, a small lesson. Objects will always be larger than they are in, 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 in the real world. They will always appear larger on the radiograph than they are in real life. That's size distortion and it's always going to happen, okay? Shape distortion will always happen too, but that's a different topic. Uh, size distortion, always there, and you can figure out how much size distortion by taking the SID, dividing by SOD. Now, typically you're only gonna be given SID 
and OID. Okay, this is part of your part of the homework stuff, right? And uh, and it's it's pretty straightforward. So if I tell you, um, let's do a couple of these. Let's. Um, do I have a good picture? No. Let's erase a couple things. So, the magnification formula is SID divided by SOD, okay? Um, you might be given an SID. We'll say it's 40 inches, okay? And you might be given an OID. Okay, object to image distance. Um, let's say it's a hand, okay? What's the typical thickness to a hand? Three to five centimeters. Three to five centimeters. Oh, okay. It's okay. Three to four inches this way, yeah. right? But three to five centimeters that way, okay? Um, so rough, roughly speaking, f um, little over an inch, a little less than two inches, about an inch or two thick, okay? Yeah, but let's use centimeters, so let's just call it five centimeters of OID. I'm sorry, I'm using non-compatible units. Let's make this 100 centimeters. And we use compatible units and everyone's happy, okay? SID is 100, OID is 5. So what we're saying is there's a source of radiation, an image receptor, the distance from source of radiation to image receptor is 100 centimeters or 40 inches, okay? There is an object somewhere in here, and the distance from the surface of that object down to the receptor, that distance, five centimeters, okay? I'm given SID and I'm given OID. Yeah, I just told you those, okay? But the formula to figure out magnification is SID divided by SOD, okay? So here you go. To figure out SOD, you take SID and subtract OID. SOD, source to object distance, as it implies, is the distance from the source of radiation To the surface of the object. So that black line represents SOD. And to figure that out, you just take the OID, take it away from the SID. So what should be our source to object distance for this one? SOD, yeah, equals 100 minus 5. SOD equals 95. 95 uh, what? 95 centimeters. Okay, so now you have a source to object distance and you have an SID, okay? These two things together will let us figure out magnification of the object. So now you'll need to know how big your object is in the real world, okay? How will you figure out how big an object is in the real world? Measure it. Take a measurement of it. Okay. So, you know, let's say the metacarpal of my hand. That's one I usually like to go to. Um, let's say the third third metacarpal is I don't know. Let's make up a measurement. Let's say it's eight centimeters long. Okay. Third metacarpal is eight centimeters long in the real world. All right. Let's use this num these numbers we've get been given. SID and SOD to figure out how big the metacarpal is going to be on the image that I'm taking, okay? We know our OID is five centimeters, we know our SID was 100 centimeters, and we know our SOD came out to 95 centimeters, okay? So we're gonna take SID of 100, so magnification, 100 divided by 95. SID, 100 
divided by SOD 95. We, we knew both of those numbers. Is anybody wondering where I got these numbers from? Is anybody wondering why these numbers are in the spot that they are? Okay, good. So then, just 100 divided by 95. Everyone agree with that? Yeah. Good. So the magnification factor is 1.05, okay? This is saying the object is as big as it is in the real world plus 5%. Point oh 0.05 is 5%, mm -hmm. okay? So let's take the 8 centimeter object and let's multiply it by 1.05. Somebody run that through, tell me what we get. Eight's the distance. Um, eight, eight is the length of the, of the object. The, body part. the length of the body part, right? Five centimeters was the distance that body part was off of the receptor. Using the distance from the receptor, and knowing the source to image distance, we're able to figure out the source to object distance. And now that we have SID and SOD, we can figure out what the, how magnified it is. Multiply the magnification factor, 1.05, by the length of the object. Okay? It's 8.4. Wait. Yeah, I'm sorry. Everyone agree with that? I didn't check this on my phone. Yeah. I just made these numbers up. Okay. I used my other brain. 8.4 centimeters. Okay? Is the object on the radiograph bigger or smaller than the object in real life? Bigger. Why is it bigger on the radiograph than it is in real life? Because of magnification. Can OID be zero? No. If OID were zero, would there be any magnification? No, right? But OID cannot be zero, so there will always be some magnification. Meaning your radiographic, the object represented on the radiograph will always be size distorted some amount. And now you can figure out if this OID number were bigger, the magnification factor would be bigger because this number would be smaller, right? And you have a bigger percentage increase and you have the object appear larger on the radiograph, okay? As OID increases, so does magnification. So here's another relationship. OID goes up magnification goes up, okay? This, this formula shows you that, um, and you can figure it out. You need to know the size of the object, and you need to know SID and OID, or SOD, but you're usually not given that one. You usually have to figure that one out that way. Can I answer any questions? And SOD? Or Okay, so um, just to, just one quick reminder. We needed three things to know this, right? You need to know the SID, source to image distance you were using. You need to know the object to image distance. You can measure that. You can measure both of these, okay? From these two, you can figure out source to object distance. No one's going to tell you that. You have to derive it, figure it out. Once you know source to object distance and you already knew your SID, you can use that formula to figure out how magnified something is. It will always be bigger than one, okay? Take the magnification factor, take the length of the body part, multiply it by the magnification factor. Times the, times the length of the body part, exactly. And you'll be able to figure out how large the object is on the radiograph. We'll do this. Once I get my x-ray room back up and running, it's, it's part of the labs that we do, and um, it's, 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 it's fun, I think, because it shows you. You, know, you can take, um, you can take a, you can, uh, measure a part in real life. I can, you, can learn, you, can you can write down all these numbers, and you can figure out what the expected value should be, what we expect it to be, right? And then we can actually take the radiograph, and we can use the software on the computer to measure the, the radiograph and see how big it actually is and see if our expected number matches what the actual number is. And it should, because the f math doesn't lie to us. Um, and and so that, that is interesting to see if, if what we expect compares to what we actually, um, what we actually get. Okay, um, let's see, what do I got for time? I don't. All right, <laughs> that's all I got to do for, that's all I got time for today. Um, so.